Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is the introduction and preface to a new and revised edition, an encyclopedia of Freemasonry and its kindred sciences comprising the whole range of arts, sciences, and literature as connected with the institution. A new and revised edition, 1914, will be the audio when available. And the 1874 edition will be the text appearing when available. The shorter entries in this series is planned to be shorts, while the longer will be traditional videos. The appropriate playlist will be in the description and pinned comment. A new and revised edition, an encyclopedia of Freemasonry and its kindred sciences comprising the whole range of arts, sciences, and literature as connected with the institution by Albert G. Mackey, M.D., 33rd Degree. Preface I once delivered an address before a lodge on the subject of the external changes which Freemasonry has undergone since the period of its revival in the commencement of the 18th century. The proper treatment of the topic required a reference to Germany, to France, and to English authorities, with some of which I am afraid that many of my auditors were not familiar. At the close of the address, a young and intelligent brother inquired of me how he could obtain access to the works which I had cited, and of many of which he confessed, as well as of the facts that he detailed. He now heard for the first time. It is possible that my reply was not altogether satisfactory, for I told him that I knew of no course that he could adopt to attain that knowledge except the one that had been pursued by myself, namely, to spend his means in the purchase of Masonic books and his time in reading them. But there are few men who have the means, the time, and the inclination for the purchase of numerous books, some of them costly and difficult to be obtained, and for the close and attentive reading of them which is necessary to master any given subject. It was this thought that, years ago, suggested to me the task of collecting materials for a work which would furnish every Freemason who might consult its pages the means of acquiring a knowledge of all matters connected with the science, the philosophy, and the history of his order. But I was also led to the prosecution of this work by a higher consideration I had myself learned from the experience of my early Masonic life that the character of the institution was elevated in everyone's opinion just in proportion to the amount of knowledge that they had acquired of its symbolism philosophy, and history. If Freemasonry was not at one time patronized by the learned, it was because the depths of its symbolic science and philosophy had not been sounded. If it is now becoming elevated and popular in the esteem of scholars, it owes that elevation and that popularity to the labors of those who have studied its intellectual system and given the results of their studies to the world, the scholar will rise from the perusal of Webb's Monitor, or the hieroglyphic chart of Cross, with no very exalted appreciation of the literary character of the institution of which such works profess to be an exponent. But should he have met even with Hutchinson's spirit of masonry, or town speculative masonry, which are among the earlier products of Masonic literature. He will be conscious that the system which could afford material for such works must be worthy of investigation. Oliver is not alone in the belief that the higher elevation of the order is to be attributed almost solely to the judicious publications on the subject of Freemasonry which have appeared during the present and the end of the last century. It is the press that is elevating the order. It is the labor of its scholars that is placing it in the rank of sciences. The more that is published by scholarly pens on its principles, the more will other scholars be attracted to its investigation. At no time, indeed, has its intellectual character been more justly appreciated than at the present day. At no other time has its members generally cultivated its science with more assiduity. At no time have they been more zealous in the endeavor to obtain a due enlightenment on all the topics which its system comprehends. It was the desire to give my contribution towards the elevation of the order, 
by aiding in the dissemination of some of that light and knowledge, which are not so easy of access. That impelled me years ago to commence the preparation of this work, a task which I have steadily told to accomplish, and at which, for several years, I have wrought with unintermitted labor that has permitted but little time for other occupation, and none for recreation. And now I present to my brethren the results not only of those years of toll, but of more than 30 years of study and research, a work which will, I trust, or at least I hope, supply them with the materials for acquiring a knowledge of much that is required to make a Masonic scholar. Encyclopedic learning is not usually considered as more than elementary, but knowing that but few Freemasons can afford time to become learned scholars in our art by an entire devotion to its study, I have in important articles endeavored to treat the subject exhaustively, and in all to give that amount of information that must make future ignorance altogether the result of disinclination to learn. I do not present this work as perfect, for I well know that the culminating point of perfection can never be attained by human effort. But, under many adverse circumstances, I have sought to make it as perfect as I could. Encyclopedias are, for the most part, the result of conjoined labor of many writers. In this work I have had no help. Every article was written by myself. I say this not to excuse my errors, for I hold that no author should willfully permit an error to pollute his pages, but rather to account for those that may exist. I have endeavored to commit none. Doubtless there are some. If I knew them, I would correct them. But let him who discovers them remember that they have been unwittingly committed in the course of an exalted and unaided task. For twelve months, Two, of the time in which I have been occupied upon this work, I suffered from an affliction of the sight, which forbade all use of the eyes for purposes of study. During that period, now happily past, all authorities were consulted under my direction by the willing eyes of my daughters. All writings was done under my direction by their hands. I realized for a time the picture so often painted of the blind bard, dictating his sublime verses to his daughters. It was a time of sorrow for the student who could not labor with his own organs in his vocation, but it was a time of gladness to the father who felt that he had those who, with willing hearts, could come to his assistance. To the world this is of no import, but I cannot close this prefatory address without referring to this circumstance so gratifying to a parent's heart. Were I to dedicate this work at all, my dedication should be to filial affection. Albert G. Mackey, M.D. Revisor's Preface The revision of this most comprehensive encyclopedia has been a most anxious and laborious task. I have endeavored to preserve as much as possible of Dr. Mackey's work untouched, but at the same time to correct statements which later investigations have shown to be unfounded. Thus I have left all of Dr. Mackey's opinions and theories unaltered. All completely new articles or old ones with alterations I have marked with my initials, and I must take all responsibility for them. Though, as far as possible, they were submitted to Brother Hogan for his approval. I have to return hearty thanks for kind aid to the late Brother Henry Sadler, Librarian of the Grand Lodge of England, to Brother W.J. Songhurst of the Quachor Coronati Lodge, number 2076, London, England, for valuable advice and assistance on many points to Brother the Reverend M. Rosenbaum, P. Prov. G., Chaplain of Northumberland, for help with the Hebrew words, to Brother John Yarker, P. G., Warden of Greece, for information about the ancient and primitive rite, and to Brother A. C. Powell, P. Prov. G. Sup of Works of Brussels, for the article on the Baldwin Encampment, Edward L. Hawkins, M. A., Publisher's Note 
and presenting to the fraternity this new and revised edition of the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. We, also, wish to return hearty thanks to Brother Edward E. Cawthorn, A.B.A.M., Brooklyn, N.Y., for his articles on Etchison's Haven Lodge, Catacombs, Comacene Masters, Como, etc., and to Brother A.G. Pitts, P.M., Detroit, Michigan, Brother Robert A. Sheriffs, 33rd, of Elizabeth N.J., Brother W.M. J. Allen, G.H.G.L. of New York, Brother Charles A. Brooksway, P.M. New York City, for their articles on Freemasonry in the United States and Mexico, and to Brother Will H. White, 33rd, P.G.M. of Canada, for his articles on Freemasonry in Canada, T.M.H. Co. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.